if you're not following me on Instagram, please do follow because we are uploading many behind the scene pictures and videos there. Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this video, we'll take up some diagrams which are given in our NCRT uh, showing us the percentage distribution of various types of living organisms. Now, we have already talked of the number of organisms which have been discovered. So, according to Robert May, 1.5 million animals or so rather organisms have been discovered and out of this 1.5 million about 70 percent or slightly more than 70 percent are animals. So, if we uh, try to understand the person distribution and here I have given you the categories this is the same uh, diagram which is given in our NCRT. To understand this, let us see in invertebrates or amongst invertebrates, maximum number is of insects. About 70 percent of all animals are insects. That means, if we study 10 animals, there would be 7 insects. And this distribution is only about invertebrates. So, maximum number is of insects followed by other animals and others include all those excluding these two. So, all other organisms excluding crustaceans and mollusks. So, maximum number is of insects, then all other animals, after that is the mollusk and then the crustaceans. Crustaceans are the least amongst invertebrates and in this other animals then we have all other categories of uh, invertebrates. If we talk about vertebrates, this is again uh, only one group that we are talking of. Maximum number is of fishes, birds and reptiles. These two are pretty much the same percentage and after that are mammals and amphibians. So, maximum here amongst the vertebrates about 50 percent of the vertebrates are fishes and then the remaining 50 percent have four. Birds and reptiles have the bigger percentage as compared to amphibians, uh, amphibians and mammals. And if we talk about only the plants, fungi and angiosperms they uh, occupy more numbers as it is represented here. After that, there is number of algae, lichens, mosses and ferns, their numbers are very less. Now, this uh, figure gives us an idea that if you are talking about a group of animals, then which group would be maximum. When we talk of animal kingdom and we come to arthropoda, we say this is the biggest phylum and in that arthropoda, we have arachnida, crustacea, insect and all. So, insects occupy the biggest group. So, out of 1.5 million organisms which have been discovered and studied so far, 70 percent are animals, 22 percent approximately would include plants, bryophytes, algae, gymnosperms, angiosperms, etc. So, majority is animals and amongst animals 70 percent are insects. So, this is the distribution of the an organisms taking different groups into account. There are 12 mega diversity countries. Mega diversity means there is more species diversity that we are talking of. There are 12 and India is 8th. 
is 8. So, we are one out of those 12 mega diversity countries. And how do we know that we are uh, 12? India, con uh, out in, we are amongst this 12. The reason is India contributes about 2.4 percent of world's land area. So, entire world's land, our contribution or India's contribution is just 2.4 percent in the land part. But when it comes to diversity contribution, it is 8.1 percent of the world's species diversity. So, our contribution of land in the world is less, but in that less land, the species diversity is much higher and that is why this is India's contribution and that is why we are one of the 12 mega diversity countries. And the reason for such a high number or high percentage of uh, species diversity is because in India we have various types of ecosystem. There are uh, water bodies, fresh water bodies, uh, oceans, then grasslands, various types of forests, various types of deserts. So, all these different types of ecosystem have different types of living organisms there. The plants are also different, the animals also uh, are also different and that is why the species contribution of India is much higher. So, we now know the distribution of animals and these three which are given are very important because when the questions are asked on this, what they do is they make the same kind of uh, image and instead of this they would write it as A, identify A or here they can write A, B, C and D, identify A, B, C, D, E and in our exams they are going to give us the same diagram which is given in the book. Only thing is they can remove those labels and instead they would ask us which is this particular slot representing or out of this which is the maximum and uh, so on. Questions are asked on this also how many mega diversity countries are there and our rank also how much of land contribution we make in the world and how much of the species diversity contribution we make. So, this tells us the distribution of various kinds of animals and plants and different organisms amongst the 1.5 million number of organisms. In the next part, we will discuss few more things about diversity. How does it change as various things change?